black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down a dead fire at Reality Temple. Reality Temple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down a dead fire at Reality Temple. West. Welcome to Afro Synergy News and Information on Africa and the African Diaspora. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with me. I'm Carol Costello. With just a week until Congress returns to Washington, the Obama administration is ramping up its efforts to get support on a possible serious strike. The president meeting today with two top Senate Republicans after saying he'll seek congressional approval on initiating any military action. The president noting that many in Congress, quote, want their voices to be heard. Now the people who elected them are speaking out and hopes their opinions will also influence the debate. Obama, hands off Syria! Obama, hands off Syria! Obama, hands off Syria! I want to let the American president know that we want peace, we don't want war. And then that's all that violence is going to accomplish is more violence and death, and that's not the way to handle the situation. You're talking about billions of people who are against us on this issue, and so we need to go through our congressional powers, our balance of powers, to get approval to de declare war if we're going to go to war. I don't think the whole American people support this. And it's not fair for the Syria people to, right after everything that happened, we go there and still bomb them. Joining me now from Washington is Syrian activist and dissident Ahed Al Hendi. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. You will now have an opportunity to hear the words of a Syrian who claims he has been imprisoned in Syria. And after he was released, he came to America. Which side do you stand on? Should America strike Syria militarily? Of course. I mean, like, we, we've been witnessing the brutality of Assad regime since two years and a half, and no one is stopping this brutal dictator from killing his own people. And now, recently, the usage for, of chemical weapon, and, and this is for the 13th time, he used it, and nobody stopped him. This is his first lie. There has been no evidence from an independent body showing that the Syrian government used chemical weapons on the Syrian people. There has, however, been an indication from the United Nations in May of this year that the March 19th chemical attack in the Aleppo area of Syria was carried out by the rebels, the groups backed by the United States. The United States is not an independent body and has sided with the combatants aligned against the Syrian government. And now if, if, if Assad regime, if Assad would be let, I mean, without any accountability using the chemical weapons, we are letting others even to use the chemical weapons against their own people, maybe uh, non-state actors to use it even against democracy, against other country. Notice that he is now using the talking points of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, already shown to be a liar, with the most recent being comments about hair samples indicating sarin gas was used. The reality is that we have known for months that the terrorist rebel groups backed by the United States. Gas of choice is sarin. Therefore, Kerry has not revealed anything new. Assad should be accountable and, and of course, I am for an American strike to at least punish Assad from, and, 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 and stop him from repeating this scenario again. There is absolutely no evidence indicating that Assad had anything to do with the chemical attacks anywhere in Syria. Why do you think the United States and its European allies on the United Nations Security Council instructed the United Nations investigators to not indicate if the evidence showed which side carried out those chemical attacks? Um, 
Ahead, you were imprisoned and tortured by Syrian authorities. What can you tell us about? You know, tell us your personal story about the brutality of this regime. Before he starts speaking more lies, realize that he is no longer in prison in Syria. He is now present in the United States. If the Syrian government was so brutal, why is he now free in the United States without any bruises on his body and free to spread the lies of the Zionist masters? If the government of Syria was so brutal, why is he still alive to speak of that purported brutality? If he is an agent of the Zionist regime, will he not say things that represents who his allegiance is to? Okay, I came to the U.S. five years ago, I mean before, and seven years ago I was in jail in Syria for just forming a secular youth group in Damascus University. Back then we were young people, we opposed asset policy in supporting groups like Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, and for, for like his human rights record inside the country. So, claims to have been jailed seven years ago for two years in Syria, and then he came to the United States five years ago. Notice he immediately points the finger at Hamas and Hezbollah, two targets of his Zionist masters. Really, would he even be allowed into the United States if he did not position himself as being against Hamas and Hezbollah? No, he would not be allowed in the United States and he would not be speaking on CNN right now. And then I was jailed, arrested, tortured, and inside the prison I witnessed a lot of torture that happened even to kids just because their family members were against the regime. All lies. Where is the evidence of this guy ever being tortured in Syria? Do you see any signs of torture on his body? Where is the evidence of children being tortured in Syrian jails? Do you see any evidence of that? All you hear are his lies. We have heard such lies from Iraqis when the United States needed those lies. We have heard such lies from Libyans when the United States needed those lies. Now we hear the same lies from a person who wants to keep his status living in the United States of America. We want the truth, not lies. So it's, it's a brutal regime. I mean, I mean, since 1970, the Syrians are suffering from Assad the father, and after 2000, Syrians thought that Assad the son going to be better of his father. But I mean, he's doing the same, even worse. Assad ah, now Assad the father and Assad the son. The Zionists, along with their Arab servants, stirred up trouble in Syria under Hassan, the father of Assad. And now they are at it again. The truth is that this Syrian is a traitor to the Syrian people. He has prostituted himself as a whore to the Zionist entity that dropped chemical weapons in the form of white phosphor upon the Palestinian people in Gaza. You are not going to hear this Syrian speak out against this because he serves the interests of his Zionist masters. The father did Hama 1982 and killed more than 40,000 of people, and now the son killed more than 100,000 of people. Now the old can lies about Assad killing 100,000 people. In a civil war, one side never does all of the killing. How many Syrians have been slaughtered by the opposition? How many buildings blown up by these terrorists killing thousands of people? The problem with these young men is similar to the problem with many young men in America who are duped by the older men to fight unnecessary wars to appease the greed of older men. The United States killed more than 1.5 million in Iraq. How is that compared to a few hundred thousand? The United States took money from cities to carry out wars in foreign lands. Yet you wonder why the inner cities across America are crumbling. Yet you wonder why the youth are running rampage in cities across America. It is because you have neglected them in the interest of your Zionist masters. And the U.S. Congress need to know this and they need to shape up or ship out. Hello, this is T. West. Welcome to AfroSynergy, news and information on Africa and the African diaspora. Example of liars deflecting to hide a lie. Syria, chemical attack. Describing this video as disturbing doesn't do it justice. 
but some attach a different word. Proof. I have absolutely no doubt this was a chemical weapons attack. Now pay close attention. He's going to ask her a very important question. Amy Smithson has been studying the use and effects of chemical weapons for 20 years and says it was the child in this video that erased all doubt. This woman is an agent and she's on the program to lie. maybe five years old and the twitching of the eyes and the mouth and the arms were all going in different directions at different times that simply cannot be coached in a child of that age and here's another with white foam pouring out of his nose what is that and, and what does it mean well it's one of the hallmark s symptoms of exposure to a nerve agent it could have been a cocktail of chemicals not just classic warfare agents like sarin or VX or Soman or Tabin. Victims can die within 10 minutes of breathing sarin gas. In liquid form, a fraction of an ounce can be fatal. Even contaminated clothes can hurt you. Iraq used sarin against the Kurdish people in the 1980s, killing thousands. The Japanese cult Om Shinrikyo used sarin in terrorist attacks in the mid-90s. The people treating these victims don't have any sort of respirators or, or protection on. Uh, why aren't they getting infected as well? Well, there's been an attempt to wet these people down to decontaminate it. Clearly not an answer. She's avoiding the question. That's what decontamination in a rush is all about. What you have just witnessed is deflection away from the question. She totally ignored the question because those persons helping these people who are supposedly affected by a chemical weapons attack, they are not protected. Why aren't they affected by the chemicals? Again, here's the question. The people treating these victims don't have any sort of respirators or, or protection on. Uh, why aren't they getting infected as well? Let's see what else this propagandist, this liar, has to say. Just making sure that they're, they're at least doused with water, if not soapy water. As you can see, she continues to ignore answering the question. She knows what the question is. Why aren't those guys protected? from the chemicals themselves. They have nothing on, no respirators to protect themselves. This is fake. And the clothes are taken off. Nerve agents like sarin blind victims, causing them to choke and spasm. Like this, see the twitching in the body? So right here, you see her trying to, oh, 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 let me take your eyes over here. I don't want to answer that question, but let me take your eyes over here. There, look at this, see the twitching of the body? And these images of the dead show no signs of a conventional bomb blast. No signs of a bomb blast means that Assad did not fire any rockets into that area. As one reporter indicated, there was an accidental explosion that caused the gas to escape. These terrorists were using chemicals and preparing to use these chemicals to attack the Syrian military. There you see bloody bodies, broken bones, gaping wounds. She's lying again. There are no broken bones and broken bodies. Chris Lawrence, CNN, Washington. Zionist liars.